Imagine this, a state-of-the-art aircraft, a seasoned crew, and 228 souls on board, vanishing over the vast, mysterious Atlantic Ocean, leaving the world puzzled, mourning, and asking, what happened to Air France Flight 447? The story of Flight 447, the Titanic of air disasters, the chance of it falling out of the sky is unthinkable. This isn't just a story about a tragic accident. It's a tale of human endeavor, technological challenges, and the relentless quest for safety in the skies. It's about a moment that changed aviation, prompted questions, and led to innovations that affect every flight you take today. But what happened on that fateful night of June 1st, 2009? How did a modern airliner disappear without a trace, only to be found years later? And what lessons did we learn from the heart of the Atlantic? Stick with us as we dive deep into the mystery of Flight 447. Uncover the series of events that led to its disappearance and explore how this tragedy reshaped the future of aviation. It's a journey through the clouds into the eye of the storm and beyond. So fasten your seatbelts and let's take off into this incredible story. And if you're as passionate about unraveling the mysteries of our world as we are, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell so you won't miss any of our adventures. Ready? Let's go. Air France Flight 447 was a scheduled international passenger flight from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil to Paris, France, which crashed on 1st June 2009. The aircraft involved was an Airbus A330203, operated by Air France since its delivery from Airbus on 18 April 2005. This tragic event resulted in the deaths of all 228 passengers and crew on board, marking it as the deadliest crash in Air France's history and the Airbus A330 as well. AF447 left Rio de Janeiro on the evening of 31st May 2009 and was due to arrive in Paris the following morning. Approximately three and a half hours after departure, while the aircraft was flying over the Atlantic Ocean, it encountered a series of problems that led to its crash. Precisely at two o'clock, 10 minutes and five seconds UTC, the serenity of the flight was abruptly disrupted. The aircraft's autopilot, a guardian of the journey's smoothness, disengaged, likely victim to the pitot tube's battle with ice. This sudden shift propelled the plane from the steady hands of normal law into the uncertain grasp of alternate law two, ALT2, a realm where machines whisper uncertainties. Within a heartbeat, or three seconds to be exact, the engine's auto thrust systems relinquish their hold, leaving behind an eerie silence punctuated only by the autopilot disconnect warning echoing through the cockpit voice recorder, also known as the CVR. Pierre Bonin took the helm, steering into the unknown. The absence of autopilot invited turbulence to dance, tilting the aircraft into a reluctant right roll, Bonin, with a twist of his wrist to the left, hoped to counteract. Yet the ALT2 heightened the sensitivity to roll, leading Bonin into a dance of overcorrection. The aircraft swayed, left then right, as Bonin grappled with its erratic responses, pulling back sharply on his side stick, an action both unnecessary and extreme. This maneuver sent the aircraft climbing, breaching its cruising altitude as stall warnings briefly filled the cockpit a prelude to a sharp descent in airspeed and a climb that would defy the norms of ascent rates for an Airbus A330. As the clock ticked to two o'clock, 10 minutes and 34 seconds UTC amidst the chaos, a flicker of hope appeared. The left side instruments and the integrated standby instrument system, ISIS, began signaling the rising airspeed, but unfortunately it was after a harrowing half minute of inaccuracy. Yet the narrative of this flight was far from shifting to calmer chapters. Bonin, perhaps lost in the storm of the moment, continued his nose up inputs, pushing the stabilizer to its limits. The climb reached its maximum altitude around 38,000 feet, with the aircraft poised at a precarious 16 angle of attack, engines roaring, a desperate cry for ascent. But gravity began its reclaim. The aircraft spiraled towards a stall. The wings of the plane couldn't keep up anymore, and the aircraft began its tragic descent. Bonin said, I don't have control of the airplane anymore now, and two seconds later, I don't have control of the airplane at all. Confusion reigned in the cockpit. Bonin, gripped by a loss of control, voiced his disbelief. A sentiment echoed in Robert's command for a shift to the left, hoping to regain control. 
Yet, their efforts were thwarted by dual inputs, an invisible tug of war between ascend and descend. Robert was chanting, climb, and after the fourth time, Captain Dubois realized that Bonin was causing the stall, and shouted, no, don't climb, and asked Bonin to give him control, which he did. However, Robert was unable to push his side stick forward to regain lift, as the jet was now too low to recover from the stall. The last recording on the CVR was Dubois saying, 10 degrees pitch attitude. The investigation into the crash of Air France Flight 447 was spearheaded by France's Bureau of Inquiry and Analysis for Civil Aviation Safety, BEA. Released in 2012, the BEA's final report concluded that the tragedy resulted from a combination of factors. With the discovery of the jet's black box, a wave of anger swept through observers as the preventability of the accident became increasingly apparent. Now, with the flight recorders finally recovered from the ocean floor, we know more about what happened in the final harrowing moments of that Rio to Paris flight. One Here's major that. aspect highlighted in the report was the inadequacy of the pilot's response to the autopilot disconnection and their subsequent handling of the aircraft. It pointed to a deficiency in their training for manual aircraft operation. Moreover, the pilot's control at high altitudes was criticized, particularly their handling of unreliable airspeed indications, which led to further complications. The report shed light on systemic issues within the aviation industry, emphasizing the necessity for improved training and regulatory oversight. The report also suggested that better procedures could have mitigated the situation, potentially saving the lives of the 228 people on board. Measures were implemented to enhance pitot tube reliability on Airbus aircraft, focusing on preventing icing-related issues. Additionally, there was a renewed emphasis on manual flying skills and procedures for handling high-altitude stalls. Okay, now we're going down, right? Yes. Efforts were intensified to provide pilots with more accurate and timely weather information, especially for routes traversing remote areas such as oceans. Je leur ai dit la vérité. I told them the truth. That is, that the chance of finding survivors is extremely slim. Despite sympathy for the victims, outrage grew over perceived negligence. This anger persisted over the years, culminating in a Paris court's decision in 2021 to hold both Air France and Airbus accountable for involuntary manslaughter in the tragic crash. This ruling marked the culmination of 12 years of legal proceedings following the accident, underscoring the ongoing quest for accountability. In the wake of the 2009 crash of Flight AF-447, both Air France and Airbus came under intense scrutiny, facing manslaughter charges. By 2019, prosecutors had shifted their stance, advocating for the dismissal of charges against Airbus while urging that Air France be held accountable for manslaughter and negligence. They argued that the airline had been aware of significant issues with a crucial airspeed monitoring instrument, but failed to adequately prepare its pilots to address these problems. The legal proceedings against Airbus concluded on July 22nd of that year, with the case being dropped. Subsequently, in September, the case against Air France was also dismissed, as magistrates determined there was insufficient evidence to warrant prosecution. And yet, they are acquitted. I find it very difficult to understand my country's judicial system. However, in 2021, the narrative took another twist when a Parisian public prosecutor called for both Airbus and Air France to stand trial. By April of that year, it was confirmed that the two companies would indeed face prosecution for the crash. Airbus's legal team promptly announced plans to appeal against the prosecution decision. The trial commenced on October 10, 2022, with charges of involuntary manslaughter brought against both entities, who pled not guilty. On December 7th, a surprising turn occurred when the prosecution stated they would not push for a manslaughter conviction against either company, citing a lack of sufficient proof of guilt. This recommendation for acquittal sparked outrage among the victims' families and friends. Ultimately, on April 17, 2023, both Airbus and Air France were acquitted of the manslaughter charges. However, the legal saga did not conclude there. Merely 10 days post-acquittal, a French prosecutor initiated an appeal against the verdict, underscoring the complexities of the case and the ongoing pursuit of accountability and justice following the tragedy. 
Today, we remember the 228 souls who embarked on a journey across the ocean but never reached their destination. Their legacy, however, has traversed far beyond what anyone could have imagined. It's a poignant reminder of the value of every life and the impact of each story. In the wake of tragedy, the human spirit's resilience shines the brightest. The loss of Flight 447 catalyzed a revolution in aviation safety, leading to advancements that have made flying one of the safest modes of transportation today. It's a bittersweet testament to our ability to learn, to adapt, and to honor those we've lost by making the skies safer for others. Thank you for joining us on this deeply moving journey. Your curiosity fuels our exploration of the stories that shape our world in the skies and beyond. Remember, each end is just a beginning to another discovery, another story waiting to be told. Until we meet again in our next adventure, keep looking beyond the horizon and never stop wondering about the mysteries of our beautiful complex world. Safe travels, everyone.